most of of my books and comic collection are sort of random odds and en ends or odds and sods if you like um i don't tend to collect many series but rather i pick shit up as and when i find it if the art's cool yeah uh as such i was collecting 2080 for a little while for a short period picking them up as and when i found them and uh, you know, not a lot of it was terribly interesting at the time. I did come across this strip here, artwork by Simon Davis. And it did stand out to me right away. For one thing, 2000 AD, especially in modern days, sorry, is uh, pretty much dead against painted artwork. They almost are exclusively digital or like, you know, the occasional black and white ink strip. Uh, so the painted artwork is very rare to see in newer editions of 2000 AD. So that stood out right away. And also, uh, just fucking look at it. Look at how well it's painted. It's almost, I'm not, the word abstract was in my head, but it's completely the wrong word to use. But it's it's very sort of almost fine artish in terms of like, you know, the sort of blocks of paint that he's used to make up these images as opposed to, you know, fine blending and shading and such um and you may notice right away his faces are really fucking good turns out he's a bloody portrait artist or portrait artist if you like uh, this is sinister dexter it's about some like i don't know bounty hunters or some shit i don't really know too much about it i am an ignorant slut as they might say in terms of these things. I don't really know what it's about. I've not read it. I just look at the art. Look at the colours, man. The colours in that are fucking cool. I guess it's like night time or something, so it's all like blues and purples, which is, you know, smart. Good, good shit. Um, but yeah, he's a portrait artist, and so that definitely comes across in his comic book work. Look at that. For a panel layout. That's fucking good, that is. That's smart. It's a whole face with two panels there. Um, yeah, so he's, I mean, he's done a load of comic book stuff, not lots that I know of. He's done a bunch of 2000 AD stuff, some for DC. Um, but as far as I'm aware, he's more a, a portrait artist, like a fine artist. Uh, there's some information about him somewhere. Um, and then this was in like the Judge Dread magazine came in a plastic thing with like bonus comics inside. So this is, uh, I believe, Download is the place that this comic is set in or something like that. I don't know. So this is a whole little, uh, yeah, little comic of this Sinister Dexter comic with Simon Davies's artwork in it, which is fucking good. Because, you know, hand-painted comics, fucking good. Hand-painted comics, when they're painted this well and this originally. Because all the, the Simon Bisley, Greg Staples, Jim Murray, Glenn Fabry, their styles, they're all, you know, they have the individual styles, but they all do sort of blend into one another a little bit. This guy, he's a whole other thing. Man, his, his style... And I assume that comes from his painting uh, background. Um, again, don't know anything about the guy. I don't know a fucking single detail of him or his life, but I assume he had some kind of traditional painting schooling, uh, it appears. He's, his, his artwork is, is sort of good enough that he looks like he was probably at least somewhat classically trained in painting portraits and such. Um, so that definitely comes across in his comic book work. Um, and on top of that, uh, as we saw in uh, the, the 2080, I've not slept. I've been awake for like, I don't know, 20 something hours. So uh, apologies if this is shit. Um, but yeah, he has some really good panel layouts. These are a little bit more sort of basic and average comic book panel layouts but he has some some really good smart uh choices 
of laying out panels and then what he puts in the panels uh that's quite a you know not outrageous but pretty smart little little do to add little double thing uh it's just very impressive to see especially in you know the digital age in which we reside it's really really cool and refreshing to see hand painted comics painted this well and this interestingly like if nothing else it's just really fucking interesting to look at the sort of certain you know effects and stuff that you could get with digital art but it just doesn't you can't quite you know with the watercolors and stuff with the what i assume is acrylics on top of it it really is just 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 bloody good oh that's cool Hello, boys. Oh, nice spacing. I do like a good spacing. I've painted a few of those, but that's really cool. The way he's used the watercolours for the actual space part of it. It's really cool. So that's that's all like, I saw those, because uh, as I say, I was collecting these at the time. Sort of threw them to the wayside because it wasn't anything I was particularly interested in at the time. But then... Ladies and man cunts, I came across this Slain. We all know Slain's bloody cool. Some really cool painted comics in the Slain series. This is book two. I've not tracked down book one yet, but I, I may try to at some point. Hardback, nice, cool. Slain, the Britannia Chronicle, Chronicles. Tired, sorry. All hand painted Simon Davis artwork. Straight away. Straight the fuck away. Look at that. Fucking look at that. Look how fucking good that is, man. So, so nice. The colours are rich and bold, and the lighting's fantastic. And I had a little look through this before uh, doing this video, just to sort of refresh my mind. Um, so you'll notice the panel uh, layouts are really fucking great in this book. This is like, it's like an art book, basically. This whole, if you just flip through it, like, it's just, it's so, so fucking good, man. All the shapes are so solid like there's loads of volume there with the lighting and everything and it's so like it feels weighty yeah but then still it feels loose because of the the brush strokes he uses because he's not like done curved lines and really blended in the shapes and stuff it's just like little little plobs of paint but it's so so good that hand is amazing the lighting it's just so good and that's so all his portrait work is great the people look amazing uh you know realistic proportions and faces expressions and stuff the weight the lighting but he can also do cool wacky shit like that fucking warped out slain teeth look great fucking craziness uh yeah man and there's there's so one thing i noticed right away about this that something i really like which i i've tried to do in some of my comics um but i'm always like well it needs to look like a comic so I do, 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 do. panel layouts i love i love a good insert panel where you do like a splash page and then you chuck an insert panel in and this whole book basically is almost all that entire like no borders no gutters dividing the page that's panels that's panels that's panels there's three panels there but they're all it's all one painting it's so fucking cool and that's one painting with an inset panel and then that's i guess one two three separate little panels of them fighting genius so as i said before he's got some smart uh panel ideas in the comics we looked at previously i believe these were 2013 and this is 2016 so three years later on um 
I, I, he's developed greatly. Horned God. Um, the colours he uses as well. He, he uses tone to set different scenes. Colours and tones to set different scenes, which is something I've mentioned before in comics. Um, having different scenes have different, like, colour uh, identities to separate them. So it's not all just one set of colours throughout the entire thing. So limited palettes like this for the lighting in this scene where he puts the shadow and the lighting is just amazing and this is obviously two separate scenes and it's divided perfectly they don't blend into one another because they use similar colors they're completely different really fucking good and again 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 entire page of artwork a couple of insert panels entire page of artwork and that's really cool because there they are looking up at that and here they are in a separate panel looking up at that Fucking, fucking good, man. And of course, being the portrait artist he is, the faces and anatomy and everything is on point. I love how angular it is, but still it's like realistic for what it is. Um, I wasn't really aware of Simon Davis uh, before this. I, I had to look back at these to be like, wait, isn't that that guy who did that? Um, I follow him on Instagram from fairly recently uh, and I recommend you do the same uh, because he's he's a currently working artist he's regularly posts his portrait work and stuff which is really really cool uh, artwork he's um, I think it's in the back there's a little bit of information on him uh, he's done a bunch of comics since the 90s and blah blah, blah. comic book work uh, yeah, divides his time between comic book work and portrait painting and is the vice president of the Royal Society of portrait painters so he's 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 a painter like that's what he does so if you do look on his instagram look at his portrait work his you know just paintings of, of bodies and nudes and stuff really really fucking good and it's it's in like almost in this style with these like you know etches and blocks of paint to build up tones and, and highlighting and stuff crowd scenes Ugh. crowd scenes are the fucking most awful thing to, to try and paint besides like cityscapes or something um, but that's fucking good it's all lighting limited palette which is uh, if you're going to paint a crowd scene use a limited palette because <laughs> trying to pull out all the details in you know different coloured clothes and stuff is just the biggest pain in the ass. Uh, so that's really cool the trees fairly fairly simply painted not you know perfectly rendered but like anything you know blobs of paint but they look amazing the, again shadows lights tones texture slightly more traditional panels but really really uh, used with great effect so you know more full page artwork but then these are like individual like seconds of time almost there's a guy gets murdered there's a guy gets murdered there's a guy gets murdered and again, guy murdered, guy murdered, guy murdered. Or his arm off at least. And that carries on. And then it's just him saying, I'm the, the red nut of armour, uh, the axe river will flow, and you will drown in the wound sea. I am the corpse scorer. My name is Slay McRoth, and I am eminently severe in the work of violence. Fucking cool. Man, I need to read more Slain. I've looked through loads of Slain, but never really read it. <clears throat> but I probably should. Very cool watercolours in the background. Acrylics on top. Very, very nice. Which is a really smart choice, because you want the backgrounds, especially in a scene like this, to be a bit more, like, blurred, uh, for lack of a better word. Um, just they are, they are sort of held back from the foreground artwork. Um, so using watercolours like that is... is perfect a very very good idea eyes and you've got the lighting of like the the shadow of the leaves and stuff from the trees on their faces that's really cool too um i pretty much will go through every page that's a very very cool page that's cool every page is like its own you hang any of these on a wall especially since the original artwork won't have the you know the lettering on it so that'd be an awesome, just giant poster or piece of artwork to hang on the wall. Little figures 
I've said before, I'll say again, one of my favourite, favourite thing, well, in, in comics, is painted comics. One of my favourite things within painted comics is little painted figures, because they just look so cold. Just like broad-ish brush strokes, just painting these little figures. They just look like little painted things. I don't know, I like them. Fuck you. Uh, really cool panel layouts. Look, that's a, it's got the straight edge there, but no actual panels. That's really, really cool. Colours, lighting, differentiating the scenes and shit. And again, I assume this is like a flashback or something. <clears throat> of course, I haven't read the thing. Why would I fucking do that? I'm not, I'm not a nerd, some fucking twat who's going to read. Painted in like a sepia tone for the flashback. That's cool. It's smart. Colours, colours. Cool, cool. He's warped out. That's where he goes warped out and berserk. Fuck sharps. He goes from that to that. That's cool. The fat hands. And then he's just crazy fucking brutalising everyone. Uh, on the pile of bodies there. Like gun vikings. <laughs> There were, um, I don't know if I've gone past them actually, there were a couple of, of um, pages I wanted to point out, yeah, this one, this one in particular, um, a really good example of how it's all one, the background is one picture, so that's all the grass going up to her feet and her, and then the background is just sort of this strip here, slain there off in the background, um, and then the insert panels over it, and then panels without actual borders, but just that, and then just her head, and then them there in the bottom panel. Amazing, fantastic panel layouts there. And then, you know, similar here. Really, really fucking cool. There's a guy ripping his skin off. That's so cool. I'd hang that on my wall happily. But then that's also just this one big, big double page spread of, of one image. I love the white space there as well. That's really cool. Watercolours going into the acrylics. And then the, throughout the entire book, the use of, of the red for the blood is really good. Um, almost every time it's like this really solid, bright red. And it really, really is effective in panels like this. It's good. It's very, very really good. The colour tones. Really good. And it, there you go again. The red really fucking stands out. It's really, really good. And then he's some kind of monster. He turns into a, like a warp monster like Slain. He's all freaky and fucked. And then some other shit. And then they fight, but guy's basically fucking slain up this monster thing fucking him up that's cool and this guy's like kill him and then it's like <gasps> it's the end of the book ah. yeah i might actually track down the first book and if there's another one after this i'll look for that covers very cool and then i remember this and seeing this and thinking it's really really fucking cool Thumbnails, really loose, little painted thumbnails. And then the ink sketches, which I assume were then painted over, I guess, like that. Thumbnail, just figure inch out, sketch, and then painted over it. Thumbnail, sketch. Which is really, really cool to see. Some of them, they're like, every detail is in there. But then when you paint on top of it, you you know or he added you know further details so it's cool to see you know how much information he uses from the drawing to the painting it's really really good it's my point that's what i'm saying like that is all that's the um if i can find it The one I pointed out. That one. So it's all like green and mossy vegetation all over it. 
and that's the drawing for it. So it looks pretty loose. He obviously has a very, very good idea of what it is he's doing, but keeping it quite loose. And then when it comes to painting it, that's where it really comes to life. It's fucking good, man. I don't know if I, if I spend enough time on that. Look at that, the wicker man. Watercolour for like the fire and stuff, but then you can see you can see where it's painted over the inks. So the paint is like uh, washing the ink out almost, but then the acrylics on top of the watercolour is really, really brightening things up. Cool, 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 cool. Simon Davis. If you don't know who he is, look him up. I didn't, and I looked him up. And now I'm a fan, because he's bloody good.